All right, guys. So let's start with the VRC section. Um, so the there is one RC with five five questions, then another five questions. So you miss all five questions. Yes, five, 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 four, and then we have. Six VA. All right, so let's start with the first uh, passage. All right, George Orwell was a pen name of Eric. Uh, 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 George Orwell, journalist, best known for his uh, allegorical political novels, Animal Farm in 1984. Latter describes the future uh, risk disturbing society at the use of object adjective or variant to describe totalitarian mechanisms of thought control. Totalitarian, okay, this is. Something upon completing studies in Eton, having no prospect of gaining a university scholarship means being insufficient to pay for tuition. Indian Imperial Police in Burma, okay, resigned and returned to England in 1928 to having, uh, having grown to hate imperialism as evidenced by first novel Burmese Days. Okay, fine. This novel basically shows that he hated imperialism. Published in 1934 by such notable essays, Hanging, Shooting, he adopted his pen name in blah blah blah, writing for the uh, new Adelphi. Perhaps surprisingly for a writer with progressive socialist views, he chose a pen name that stressed his deep and lifelong affection for the English tradition and countryside. Fine. George is the patron and Orwell in Suffolk visits his most beloved English sites. Blair lived for several years in poverty, sometimes homeless, sometimes doing itinerant work, as he recalled in the book Down Not in Paris. He eventually found work as a school teacher until ill health forced him to give, up, give this up to work part time as an assistant in second hand bookshop. During most of his professional time, um, Orwell was known for his journalism, both in British press and books uh, reporters, such as Homage to Catalonia, Activities, Down and Out, Road to Freedom, Fine. According to Newsweek, Orwell was the finest journalist of his day and the foremost architect of the English essay since Hazlitt. Uh, most remembered for two of his novels, Fine and Milan, Farm in 1984, Formers and Allegory of the Corruption, Socialist Ideas, blah, 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 Prophetic Version of the Results of Totalitarianism. 1984 also presents Orwell's philosophy regarding metaphysical objectivism. Orwell had returned from Catalonia, staunch anti-Stalinist and anti-communist, but he remained to the end a man of the left and his own words, a democratic socialist. Uh, essay, we're talking about some essay, decries the effects of political propaganda, social media, literary styles, blah, blah, blah. Orwell's concern over the declining power of language to capture and express reality with honesty. Was written, uh, Invention of Newspeak. Imaginary country, okay. Newspeak is a variant of English in which vocabulary is strictly uh, limited by the government fiat. Goal is to make an increasing effect to express ideas and contradict, even to conceive such ideas. A train political career was dominated by attention between his desire for greater equality and social justice and his ambivalent attitude towards the middle class background. That includes but your H's, I's. All right. Development of new. Uh, let's go to the questions now. Uh, the development of Newspeak alludes to which of the following thoughts? News we, Newspeak we saw here. Absence of cognizance between the language and originality of thoughts. No. Powerlessness of the language utilized by the state hardware to portray reality with genuineness. Powerlessness means powerless. Here we are talking about restriction. Deliberate restriction, yes. Strictly limited by the government fiat. Of the language by the state so as to smother the resistance against its, its position. Yes, this is what they're talking about. Feature the mistreatment of the majority by state hardware utilizing more uh, language as a mode of thought control. Not thought control, but inability to contradict. So this is not it, this is not it, this is not it, this is the answer. Uh, primary purpose of the passage. They're talking about uh, to provide the reasoning behind George's uh, efforts to change his pen name. No, that is very niche. Life of Orwell and learnings derived from the same. No, we have focused a lot on his books. This is too uh, vague. Orwell's political and literary career and synergies derived from the same. No, we talked about his life, his personal struggles as well. Life of George Orwell and learnings described, uh, derived from his famous, this is it. This is precisely the summary, what it talks about in the passage. 
passage can be taken from which of the following sources so this was a very detailed passage about an author his political views and also his uh, writing styles right so article in a magazine is too uh, literary review website could be a possibly uh, possible answer because a literary website would have uh, some authentic information and it would be inclined towards literature article in a magazine is too uh, generic autobiography would have been first person this is not an autobiography textbook in pol science no we're talking about literature here so it's a literary review website as per the author uh, eric ples decision of a change pen name is odd on the grounds that the name doesn't adjust well we saw this where um we saw this right cure so the name doesn't adjust well to blaze a uh, reformist perspectives on society and legislative issues no an individual of blaze social political philosophy is probably not going to have a name established in english custom this is it lifelong affection for the right this is all talking about the english custom individual of less conviction conviction no this is too vague uh, to be keen no it's talking about why it would not have a name a person would not have a name despite the fact that blair was an individual reformist his indifference doesn't this is some other dimension entirely this is what they're talking about in the paragraph here which of the following can be construed from the passage uh, orwell was a superior writer than the author no i don't think so uh this is something that's really vague we cannot even comment on it orwell's english essays were his best work no they're talking about best known for journalism we have we're talking about classic essays and we're talking about two books no that is nowhere written no comparison colonialism and socialism equally unsuitable while we have spoken about both there's no comparison mentioned anywhere in the paragraph so i'm going to go with none of these all right so it's the next passage uh with an unauthorized biography the reader becomes whether we like it or not a thief breaking into a public figures unauthorized biography right <clears throat> breaking into public figures home to root through the stuff and unearth the secrets with a memoir uh, the author welcomes the guest in and allows us to snoop around at our leisure Amis cuts to the chase, uh, then telling us to take what we'd like. But as you might have guessed, Inside Story is no ordinary memoir. Amis, Inside Story. In fact, it calls itself a novel. In truth, it's a hybrid beast, a record of a real life, written with all the freedom of fiction, its style, tactical ingenuity, and narrative leaps, while also moonlighting as an advice book to young writers and a literary critique of some of the key influencers on Amis' work. so this is all that the book is about there's a lot of things in the book at 70 amis is still a writer who refuses to play it safe <clears throat> he has always been a provocateur son of the celebrated novelist kingsley amis he re- released his 2000 memoir experience with a cover that showed him as a tow headed boy puffing on a cigarette okay inside story shares with amis greatest novels blah blah these are the novels his signature charming rogue narrative style that manages to high wire so brilliantly between the comedic and the emotionally calamitous the main devastation of this book um, involves the death of amis lifelong friend the essayist and public intellectual christopher hitchens okay he died with can- uh, died from cancer the hitch as he was known was uniquely clever and cunning and amis writes beautifully on the subject of the close relationship as when he describes a normal meal lunch with a hitch was still lunch with a hitch in the sense that he got there around 1 and left there while the place was filling up for dinner so long time his interest in food never great and now declined into indifference but he drank his one or two johnny blacks and his half a bottle of red wine sometimes more never less and he talked with undimmed fluency and humor for 6 to 7 hours to such great effect that would be a sin he said not to round it off with some cognac Speaking of impressive friends, Amis acknowledges their presence early on. Oh, and I apologize in advance for all the name dropping. You will get used to it. And he introduces us to his pa- pal, uh, Salman Rushdie, another literary superstar who has, in recent years, made his home in New York. Amis and Rushdie spoke about his past July, uh, this past July about cancel culture, the proper length of novels, and why authors might belong to a generation but never to a movement. All right. 
So this is talking about armies. This is talking about his books. This is talking about his in, uh, influences in his books, friends. Then it ends on a note about his pen pal Rashti. Primary uh, passage prim uh, primarily revolving around metamorphosis between a biography and a memoir. According to the author, no, that was just the first paragraph. Learnings that we can get from Ami's books and his style of writing. Uh, not just style of writing, we're talking a lot about Ami's experiences as well, life experiences, friends. Ami's style of writing in the book Inside Story and the learnings that we can derive from the same. No, Inside Story is just a small part of it. There's a lot of other things mentioned as well. Ami's books and the experiences derived from the same. Experiences derived. This, this uh, can be a possible answer. Ami's books, we're talking about it, and the experiences that we derive from the same. Which of the following options cannot be inferred about Hitch from the passage? Hitch and Ami shared a strong bond of friendship. Yes, they're talking about um, close relationship here. Yes. Ami's believe that most, most of his style of writing is actually a byproduct of the learnings derived from Hitch. This is completely out of the blue. This is not mentioned anywhere in the passage. Anyway, the chapter of Hitch in the book is one of the most saddening. Yes, it's written right, right here. Uh, the main devastation of this book involves the death of Ami's lifelong friend. Hitch possessed a great style of humor that uh, Ami's believed was one of his strongest su uh, suits. It's mentioned here somewhere. Uh, Right, and influency and humor to such effect, right? So this is out of the blue. Author of the passage. The author is a literary expert who is especially uh, keen on exploring Ami's writings and experiences. Possible, because they're talking about all about Ami's. The author is someone who has worked with Ami's in the past and is extremely fond of his writings. No, there's no personal experiences mentioned for us to infer this. The author believes that Ami's writings are unique in nature and the best depiction of the difference between biography and a novel. No, again, this is too niche. We're just going to the first paragraph again. Strong, opinionated and possesses extremely rigid views about Ami's style of writing. No, there is no rigidity in his views. It is just experience derived. This is the proper explanation. Difference between a biography and a memoir as per the passage, right? We saw it in the first line itself, first this. Biography is written by someone who is fond of the person. Memoir is personally written by the same person. No, this is completely incorrect. Memoir talks about various memories associated. Biography is more contextual. No. Biography is restrictive in exploring the thoughts of the author as against a memoir. Yes, this is what they're talking about. Biography is restrictive and memoir, which is more welcoming. Here the same with the memoir, the author welcomes the guest in, right? The uh, biography is written from the point of the author, point of view of the author. No, no. Audience perspective, this is completely irrelevant. If the author were to continue this passage, what would the next paragraph talk about? Now, in such questions, we go to the last paragraph where we left off. So we left off with the author introducing us to Ami's friend. Salman Rushdie and right and where they had an uh, had a discussion on something right so we see initially okay let's just go to the options Ami's experience about inside story and specific instances revolving around his now we know that passages only get narrower as we go down so we cannot just go back up and talk about inside story again hitch was the second last paragraph so we can't go back there Ami's understanding and love for the literary work that is so well encompassing various parameters. No. Experiences with Rashti and the inspiration that he has gained from the same, which could be the possible explanation because we ended up on Rashti and initially we talked about Hitch and the uh, experiences with Hitch. So this is how the author would continue. Rashdi's experiences, no. This is again talking about Rashti while the passage is about Ami. Ami's. All right, so... We have another passage here. The internet is not what you think it is. For one thing, it is nearly not as newfangled as you probably imagined. It does not represent a radical rupture with everything that came before, either in human history or in the vastly longer history of nature. A uh, recent permutation of a complex of behaviors as deeply rooted um, in a species and as anything else we do. Storytelling, passions, blah, 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 dense with symbols. 
In order to convince you of this, it will help to zoom out for a while, far from the world of human-made devices, away from the world of human beings altogether, gaining at that height a suitably distant and lucid view of the natural world that hosts us and everything we produce. It will help, that is, to seek to understand the internet in its broad ecological context. Fine, we are looking at internet from an ecological context, against the background of the long history of life on Earth. Elephant storm, seismic event, signature vibration to kin distance of kilometers, clicks of sperm whale, sometimes heard familiars on the other side of the world, fine. Nor is it only the sound that facilitates animal communication. Many or perhaps most signals sent between members of the same species pass not through sonic vibrations, but through chemicals. Emperor moths emit pheromones, 15 kilometers, correcting for size, a distance comparable to the one traversed by even the most resonant sperm whales, click fine. So, nor is there any reason to draw a boundary between animals and other living beings. Numerous plant species, among them, them tomatoes, <coughs> uh, lima beans, blah, 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 uh, use airborne bacteria to send chemical information to the conspecifics across significant distances, triggers defense related gene expression, other changes in the growth and development. Telecommunication is sooner the norm than the uh, exception, it's the norm. Uh, some might protest that okay, telecommunication is being used in an equivocal way. Uh, as for example, we say of an irate cyclist at an intersection and of a computer when it freezes up with a blah blah blah. Some might object that is concealed sperm whales and animal uh, elephants are sending out signals that may be processed as information. That is symbolic encoding of propositional content that is then decoded by a conscious object. Subject, the same uh, may surely not be said of lima beans. Fine. Let us grant, if only to avoid unnecessary complications, that lima beans are not conscious, fine. Ask why when telecommunications in uh, conscious and unconscious life forms alike evidently involve the same principles and mechanisms. We should be so quick to assume that telecommunication in our own species must be the product of consciousness rather than being an ardent system that rose in the same way as lima bean signaling only belatedly began to allow our human consciousness to ride along with. Fine. So it's talking about internet and how it's more ecological than a recent development, fine. So, uh, what do you? Why does the author say the internet is not what you think it is? <clears throat> so, the uh, author believes that the uh, development of the internet in recent times is much more than what we imagined it to be, right? Uh, because the author thinks that it's not given its due diligence since we fail to understand how huge. No, not talking about due diligence. Uh, Take care. So because the author believes that the internet only talks about things that it feels are important, this is discretionary based. Feels that the internet takes into account recent developments and not important but old information. This can be our answer. First one, let's go back to the first one. Recent times is much more. No, it's trying to tell us that it is more ecological than a very recent phenomena. So fourth is the answer. Drawing a boundary between <coughs> animals and other level, uh, uh, living beings. Between on uh, internet does not draw a boundary. They're saying boundary name, but the saying here, nor is there any reason to draw a boundary. Drawing a boundary between animals and other living beings is relevant because internet information treats them equally. Yes, cannot be answered in the same league. Hence, boundary is quintessential. Again, no, the saying right. Yeah, a boundary is needed because numerous plant species, tomatoes. This is completely off topic main idea of the passage importance of the internet in ever evolving times uh not really know they're talking about what it what internet's context is with respect to ecological point of view understanding the most recent permutation of a complex of behaviors as deeply rooted in who we are as a species this is completely copying a line from the first paragraph and pasting here somewhere right this most recent permutation this is not the idea this is about internet this is not the idea of the passage changing our preconceived notions about internet being all encompassing and making us look at the picture differently this is what they're talking about when they say you know you go a little farther away zoom out for a while look at the different picture drawing boundaries between animals and other living beings to understand no we don't have to draw boundaries is the point cannot be inferred. Uh, so uh, internet is not all encompassing and only considers 
no they're saying it's all encompassing uh telecommunication in human species must be the product of consciousness consciousness as against other living beings no last paragraph says why should be it be a product of consciousness no between animals is done through sonic vibrations let's go back to the sonic part um it's clearly written here more signals sent between members of the same species pass not through sonic vibrations but through chemicals so this is clearly wrong this cannot be inferred from the paragraph passage is a product arose from consciousness but should be rather deep rooted right weaken the argument of the author so the author is talking about how all living beings are same and everything should be treated uh, equally and you know uh, their behaviors are all the same their uh, ideas are all the same and there's no boundaries so it has been proven that under certain situations the inner behavior of animals as against other living beings is different so this is what will negate it the recent research conducted it has been observed that, that lima beans are not conscious the author is saying that they are not conscious so it won't negate uh limited in regards to its offerings no internet is all encompassing uh, and covers content related to man made changes no this is uh, in more than a cluster of knowledge this is our answer fine this is the last passage when i study anthropology back in the early 1980s the andathals were still largely the bulk broad brutes of yore grunting in smoky caves and loping across the tundra their vanishing from the fossils recorded some 40000 years ago was a result of competition actually on second thoughts let's just clear the response here and we'll come back we'll mark for review next um grunting in smoky caves and loping across the tundra the vanishing from the fossil records some 40000 years ago was a result of competition interbreeding on four bears story is a received then retained something of the racially hierarchical views at large when the first fossilized bones were recovered in germany from near the neander river in 1856 neanderthals were made extinct by an altogether smarter creature it was inevitable that clue was in the name homo sapiens right have come a long way since uh, more finds in more caves more bones more tools more middens articulations relativism has replaced the hierarchy as the overall context for interpretation but perhaps the most striking advance in analytical methods genetic 3d imaging carbon 14 stony isotopes intricate details of physio physiog physiognomy and activity how they sat what they carry as well as possible social structures what has also done is trigger land slip of studies which have buried any hope of popular understanding fine rebecca has uh, has performed something extraordinary distinguishing them into commanding and wonderfully readable account so there is a lot of research papers and all bulk of research papers and she has uh, distilled them into a commanding and wonderfully readable account leaving us with glimpses of real scenes of imagine individual groups going about their daily lives rq and Th- ethnography rather than speculative fiction okay so this is something realistic rather than speculative fiction her vocations emerge from behind extensive passages of science but the effect is surprisingly moving the only regret is that if progress in neanderthal studies continues at the same pace kindred will at least in detail soon become outdated um what we know of neanderthals is this they were concentrated in western eurasia slightly larger eyes and nostrils were bigger difference right okay over the uh, this years of existence they've experienced last large oscillations in climate eco shocks hunter ate elephants blah 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 violence was rare but injury frequent accidental injury bill shelters and the value of treating animal skins with oak tanners burn bones stone tools right side bias specialized activities vigorously skipping hides or napping flints fine so what is the reason behind the author writing this passage the author wa- wants to highlight the findings of rebecca wang uh, wishes to uh, bring to light the developments made in studying the history of neanderthals um this could be it so rebecca rag only came out in the third paragraph the purpose is developments made in studying the history of neanderthals so it's talking about the recent developments all through the three paragraphs right 
differences in view of archaeologists in studying the development no this is irrelevant cannot be determined this is not the answer this is the answer interview the author which of the following questions would be asked now remember while answering such questions we cannot ask something that has already been answered in the passage so how are neanderthals different from humans humans would be too vague because here we are talking about homo sapiens what are humans humans is too vast a word difference that can be considered in regards to the development of study of neanderthals then and now uh could be because she's talking about now she's not talking about then what do we know about neanderthals now she has told us in two paragraphs here what is the author wish to teach the general public teach the general public is too generic a statement teach about what so this we can ask what is the difference between the study of neanderthals back then and now knowledge is known back then is restrictive and did take into account no this saying the analytics are recent this advance has been in analytics no A lot of information was buried under academic papers and not analyzed. Now the information is much more detailed. Was nay the academic uh, the information is now it has triggered now a landslip of studies in academic papers. Language uh, the knowledge back then was more realistic. However, now the mo- uh, knowledge is more textbookish. Textbookish, yes. I mean, even though there's a little bit of confusion here. because the knowledge now is more realistic because we have relativism and you know we have an entire 3d imaging thing but again textbookish yes because there's a lot of um these academic papers and studies this is completely unrelated so we'll have to go with our best guess here which would be this right it would be this uh argumentative descriptive philosophical analytical i mean she has described a lot of things he or she in the last two paragraphs and there's a lot of things that they've described i would go with descriptive all right so we are at va uh so this question over fine so when talking about uh, para jumbles usually just start with identifying the starting of the sentence so let question number 20 bound books bernard this is this remind us invoking dystopian novel um as a former keeper of special collections at the blah 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 well was in the particulars this could be a starting statement this is a <coughs> unrelated so when we talk about the first sentence takes its name from this this is what this is missing being made from dried organic matter this is this highly likely is not our starting because it's in single quotes now the problems with papyrus was how e- easily in this chapter on the let's start with b as a former keeper of special collections ovendin uh, so this is where they introducing this guy called ovendin right so introduction in the first sentence is well versed then we talking about so this statement is talking about some kind of paper and how it is inherently flammable The fourth statement is talking about one of the problems with papyrus. So usually, if we go after B, we go to D. One of the problems was how easily it could be set on fire. Then he's explaining in C, being made from dried organic matter, it is inherently flammable. How easily it could be set on fire? It is inherently flammable. Bound books printed on paper burn at blah blah blah. Or when reminds us, reminds us in contrast to this. right invoking this is novel that takes its name from this so we have a sequence we have b d c and a b b c a all right so hegel was fascinated by the word that schiller used to describe this process of combining by negation 
the german of hibbing often translated as sublation which means at once to cancel and to preserve the act of sublation is what rousseau wanted to do to the caribs okay lack of foresight preserve the presentness and thereby raise them up into a more ordered form of life hegel's writings um <clears throat> all right so the act of sublation so this cannot be the first sentence since they're explaining sublation in the first statement and then they're just casually using sublation in this so this cannot be a starting statement often dense again sublation is being used those abstractions no those has to refer to something so we start with a hegel was fascinated by the word that schiller used to describe this process of combining by negation often translated as sublation which means uh to cancel or preserve and to preserve nevertheless we can see that these abstractions are hold on abstractions are here right we're talking about these abstract things and then we're talking about abstractions so c and d are definitely a pair in hegel's writings the definition of sublations are often dense and abstract nevertheless we can clearly see how these abstractions relate only to the colonial history sketched above uh the act of sublation is want a b c d in my opinion a b c d right so sketched above colonial history colonial history sketched above this is the colonial history so this is odd one out we have 8 minutes remaining good enough there's no need to reject how biologists define the sexes to defend the view that trans women are women but the use of dna to make offspring all right so uh when we look at d and e right so d says the biological definition of sex takes all this in its stride d is it does so despite the fact that there are no more than two biological sexes right one is talking about biological takes uh, in its stride and it does so it takes in in its stride despite the fact so e and d are definitely a pair ed so when we talk about there's no need to reject when we look across use of dna so use of dna to make a offspring in central topic in biology this is completely unrelated first is talking about trans women second is talking about strange of forms of sex fifth is definition of sex fourth is biological sexes this is completely unrelated so the odd one out is b um all right so in 1960 i set out to find these places okay i know hoping that the descriptions of the sagas might lead them to no sites they set off in a sailboat and went down eastern canadian coast they were looking for places mentioned in the sagas including forest land which was flat and wooded fine continuing to sail in southerly directions reached newfoundland so before even trying to make a coherent paragraph here they talk about helge ingstad and his wife find these places hoping leading them to north sites they, they set off in a sailboat find they still talking about these people who went out to find something the, find these places which is north sites they were looking for places mentioned in these sagas including okay again what they were looking for they the insects finally reached newfoundland archaeologists found objects at the goddard site that were made with 10 different minerals completely irrelevant so e is our answer
these and other threads of and uh, this is summary these and other threads of anarchist thought have different emphases what links them all is their rejection of external authorities whether that of the state the employer or the hierarchies of administration and of established institutions like the school and the church the same is true uh, of more recently emerging varieties of anarchist propaganda green and anarcho feminism those who believe that animal liberation is an aspect of human liberation they claim that the only ideology consistent with their aims is anarchism so in spite of having various emphases all assessments of anarchism reject the outer position which is what the paragraph is saying in spite of having various these various emphases like green and anarcho feminism all assessments reject the outer position a uh, rejection of external authority where uh, se- let's look at the second option various strings of political agitation have various emphases political agitation is not relevant here i think uh and all the more as of late rising consistent are predictable with the disorder no all types of anarchism reject outside power including the more as of late varieties this is again what the first one is saying but here we have this is a summary a summary is never supposed to have examples green rebellion anarcho feminism anarchist propaganda these are examples we are never supposed to have examples in a summary these have anarchisms have various accentuations yet they all offer an aversion of outside power no this is yet this is the saying differences are yet they do the first one is saying in spite of having this is a general position that unites them right now has learned mishra has reached the point where summary judgments can be treated treated as authoritative by a western audience yet the basis of those those judgments was established long before his name began to carry weight of the course of an exceptional career he has continually picked at the not joining ambitious fancies in the global center the peripheral bloody business that enables them the dialectic of great expectations if thinking harder and studying more can curb the spread of violence might it follow that ignorant cliches amount to apology for murder so this is talking about this dude uh, mishra who lives in london and he has created his reputation authoritative reputation in the western culture so they talking about how he did this and he has established certain things so uh, okay let's look at the options mishra has established an authoritative claim on the western audience since he moved to london no they're just telling there he's in london right now there's nothing about since he moved to london thanks to mishra's amazingly well established career and deeply rooted knowledge he's able to generate uh yes uh, because they're talking about his career and they're talking about uh basis of this judgment was established before his name began to carry weight exceptional career and the stuff that he did right amazingly well established career and deeply rooted knowledge about these things he's able to generate let's look at the next one ignorant cliches amount to apologia this is a very off topic we're talking about mishra here exceptional career and constant linkages to understanding western culture can always be proven to be an error no way too generic this is what we are talking about we have 1 minute 50 seconds left um so we'll weaken the argument the author is talking about how internet is all about all right so the author is basing all the assumptions on the idea that there is no boundaries between uh, living beings and other animals and other species right so under certain situations in a behavior is different so this will weaken definitely weaken the argument All right, I think we're done. I just submit the paper. Oh my.